We are thrilled to have the Honorable Norman Rice as this evening's commencement speaker. Not only is he an inspirational speaker, but he is also one of our community's best known and long-standing leaders. He has a resume that's easily a mile long, and I'm just not saying that, that's really true. But at the core of each position or project that he has undertaken is building community and creating pathways of opportunities, all dedicated to make Seattle one of the best places to work and live in the United States. Currently, uh, Norman is the president and CEO of the Seattle Foundation, one of the nation's largest community foundations that supports our community through engaged philanthropy, community knowledge, and leadership. As I mentioned, he was Seattle mayor for two terms, earning national acclaim for revitalizing Seattle's downtown and strengthening our neighborhoods. So it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker this evening, Norman Rice. Chancellor Floton, thank you for that wonderful introduction. President Mendehoff, it's good to see you again. It was amazing when you came to visit me in my office to realize where we started and where we are today. And I'm very proud of what has gone on. And to see you uh, makes a dream come true. To those members of the legislature who are so much an uh, integral part of this journey and this creation, it really is important and it really does make a difference. And to those wonderful board members and my good friend, uh, we, uh, we see uh, a wonderful opportunity. The last time I was a commencement speaker, I addressed the first graduating class of the newly remodeled Roosevelt High School in North Seattle. After decades of use, many spent in disrepair, this historic building was remodeled to great fanfare and a whole new state-of-the-art high-tech school. Fast forward, here I am, celebrating with you the first graduating class of the Western Governors University, Washington. However, technology has allowed each of you to go to college with no building at all. <laughs> your graduation is indeed something to celebrate. Each of you and your families are proud, but there's more than pride. Your graduation is also a symbol of hope for the countless people with the desire and the drive to get ahead, if only given the chance. You know something, more than half of America's 120 workers between the ages of 25 and 64 have no post-secondary degree. In fact, no post-secondary credential of any kind. To put this in perspective, over the next 10 years, a total of about 30 million young people will graduate from high school in the U.S. Hopefully many will be prepared for college, but we can't forget that there are today twice that many adults already in the workforce who had no post-secondary credentials. Yay! WGU is proof, finally, that the United States has realized that we could no longer pursue an education policy that essentially gives up on adults. We must leave no children behind, of course, but the future gains in our economy and our labor force will come only as we get much better at educating working adults. Working adults. The needs of working adults shouldn't be obstacles to education, and there's a lot of work that's going on in this region. Skill Up, the College for Working Adults, the Seattle Foundation, the Gates Foundation, and local corporate leaders such as Boeing and Microsoft and Starbucks get it. The challenges of working adults mirror those experienced by many young people in our nation also. President Obama asked me to serve on the White House Council for Community Solutions and we've been tackling the issue of what some call disconnected youth. These are the roughly 6.7 million Americans between the ages of 16 and 24 who are neither working nor in school. Youth are suffering the worst unemployment drought since World War II nearly 20% of our young adults are failing to build a foundation for economic independence. Why? They're dropping out of school. The youth unemployment rate is the highest since the Great Depression. The goal now is to help disconnected youth, which we've changed to opportunity youth, to really begin to tap the potential of these individuals for our economy and society 
and think about the infusion of potential leadership and productivity if we make these investments. So there are great programs that are going on. There's opportunities that are really moving. People are understanding how much you're an integral part of our future. What we're finally seeing today with you here is real action to create opportunities for non-traditional students of all ages. We're creating the flexible classes, earn and learn, initiatives and independent study. We're designing programs that address real-time workforce needs that we can get better trained workers on the job sooner. We're building competency-based curriculum in high-demand careers such as information technology, education, and healthcare. And we're capitalizing on superior year learning technology to educate, train, and create those opportunities for each and every one of you. So instead of just remodeling old schools, we are reimagining the whole world of education. But technology and innovation are not the only reasons we're here today. We're celebrating the first graduating class of WGU Washington, and we're here because someone, somewhere, cared enough to help you. Faculty members at WGU provide individualized mentoring to each student. You connected with and interacted with students here and throughout the country during this time. Perhaps you have a spouse or a partner or a friend or an employer who stepped up so that you could earn this degree and reach this milestone. I want to tell you to do two things today. First, find and thank those people who had your back so you could work. Be a mom, a dad, care for elderly parents, and everything else you had to do while you earned your degree. Second, I want you to do the same for someone else. Reach into the darkness is a quote that I once said, and pull someone else along. Because when you reach into the darkness and you look at what you can do, you sometimes find not only that person's hand, but your own. Each of us is a teacher, each of us is a mentor, each of us is a change agent. Each of us can make a contribution. You started that first step today, but you have more to do. So love those people, love the opportunity, and give something back. I can't ask and think of anything better that you could do than to give something back. So always reach into the darkness and pull someone up, because sometimes when you reach in the darkness, you find your own hand. God bless you. And congratulations. On behalf of WGU Washington, we really want to thank you for your inspiring words. Please accept this little token of our appreciation. Thank you. Yes, thank you.